This is awesome. I don't often get a microphone handed to me. When I don't have a mic, I know I've only got five minutes, but with a microphone, that gives me an extra ten, five. Do I understand? Does it right? No, that's not true. Just, just so, <laughs> thanks for the warning. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, this is actually loud enough so Neil can actually hear something that, that's going on here today. So I just want to thank everybody for coming today. I think this is great. Uh, I mean, the, the, the more often that Rotarians get together, the more often that we s sit and share ideas, the more often we, we sit and try to learn new things, the better we all are off in, in the district. And I just want to, I want to do, there's two things I want to accomplish today. The first is uh, I want to talk about what I see as a vibrant club, because I've, I've really had the fortune of getting around to all the clubs around the district, and more than one time I've been around to most of the clubs, and, and I just really want to, I want to share with you what I'm seeing as what a vibrant club is. And then I know you've been talking about some of the characteristics today. And the second one is, this is where I take the extra couple minutes, is I'm going to pump our conference that is just coming into place and doing incredible. And Mary, Mary's been doing an awesome job uh, driving a lot of that program from up in old. So, so <clears throat> what is a vibrant club? Does anybody, can, can you tell me what a vibrant club would look like and feel like to anybody? What, what, does anybody have any thoughts on what that is? Inclusive and welcoming. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. Anybody active. else? What's active? Wow, that's absolutely. Yeah. Fun. Oh. So sometimes does it get pretty serious and holy moly, we got so much admin to do and so much paperwork to fill in and issues to solve that we've lose that fun. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, the, the, looking around our district, you know, last year, we lost 135 members in the district. That's, that, that, that's the biggest loss we had had. And over five years, we had lost over 500 members. But we really had lost 1,500 members because in that same five years, we had brought in 1,000 people that didn't stay. We brought them into our family, and then we promptly let them out the back door. Pretty sad, isn't it? So we wanted to figure out what that is and, and get out there and talk to, the, talk to the clubs and get our clubs going. Right now, today, I'm really proud to say we're up 83 members. We're up 83 members from the start of the year. We're, and based on, based on what Mohammed says, we're actually up 85 because there's two that haven't hit Club Runner yet. But we're, we're, we're getting there, right? We're almost back at 1,800 members. But I don't want you to get drunk on the fumes. That's, that comes from just over half of our clubs that are growing. We have 20% of our clubs, and we, we talked about this at our board meeting yesterday, are flatlined. They're kind of basically same where they were the year before. And you know what? They can go up, tip either way. They can tip either way. And we have 30% of our clubs that are in decline, and some of them are in deep decline. In fact, to get to that uh, 83 members that we grew this year, we actually had to bring in over 150 members. We still lost over 70 members. We're playing in the same sandbox as when we look at the whole, right? So what is it? When we look at these vibrant clubs, the clubs that are growing, that are active, I see five characteristics, five things that we need to be looking at. And the first one, it starts with diversity. Now, I'm not talking about diversity of gender, diversity of ethnicity, diversity of, of, of race or whatever. I'm talking about diversity of thought. Clubs that can have the ability to have a dialogue with each other. That it's okay for somebody to have an idea that's different than yours. And what you do as a member is you listen to their idea to learn rather than to react. Does that make sense? So how often have you been in the middle of talking about an idea or a thought and somebody says, yeah, but, and they're right in there before you've been able to finish your thought. We need to have the ability to listen to each other, to respect each other, to respect our ideas, to respect to where we want to go. It's incredible. There's some of the clubs, and I'll use a, uh, Calgary Heritage Park is an example. Their board meeting, the, one of the first ones I went to on the tour this year, we sat there and their board members, each of them presented their plan for the year. 
And wow, the dialogue that happened with each of them saying, you know, I don't necessarily agree with what you're trying to do here. This is what I think is our issue in our club. And the response was, I don't care what, you know, wasn't, was not, I don't care what you're thinking. It was, you know, I think I understand what you're saying. Let, let's talk more about that. Let's understand each other a little bit better. And at the end of that board meeting, it was amazing the plan that they came out with. They came out stronger and better. And each of the board, uh, each of the board members had something that made it, made it work. Sorry. Whoop. So each of the board members had something that changed or improved what they were doing. Okay, that's number one, diversity of thought. The second thing, and I heard, I think Neil was talking about diversity of thought earlier, right? So I think that's, that's awesome. The, sa the second thing that is incredibly important, have you ever walked into a Rotary Club and there's just a buzz happening? Like you, you feel the energy? Or have you ever walked into a Rotary Club Oh my God, why did I come here? Oh, nobody's talking to me. Look, those three guys over in the corner are sleeping already. Right? No, the clubs that have a hype, have an energy. You walk in and they like each other. There's a buzz. Bryce, a Canmore. You walk into a seven o'clock bre breakfast meeting. You're a little later because you guys are more reasonable about the time. <laughs> But you get there at 7.30, and then you have your meeting at 8. But you walk in there, and there's an energy. There are people who are, are getting there early. Well, Heritage Park, they get there early so they can talk to people. There's, they want to be there. It's not like, oh, I guess it's Rotary today. I better get there. Right? There's this fellowship that we're talking about. There's this, we, want, we like each other. Right? That's a big part of what makes a vibrant club. I think uh, Mosaic, Lethbridge Mosaic is another example. Wow, you walk into that club and, and you've got four or five people rushing up to, maybe you look a little different so they don't, you're not used to you being there, but they love you being there. You, they make you feel welcome. They make their own members feel welcome. Right? This fellowship kind of thing. The third thing, the third thing that really is really important for a vibrant club is I call it an accountable plan. Now, was it Martin, were you talking about business planning today? Or? It was indeed. There we go. <laughs> it, it was indeed business plan. Now, I've taught, I've taught strategic planning and stuff at the university for about 18 years. I hate even using the word strategic planning. I think it's an oxymoron. Uh, and, and, you know, we, this morning we, we, had, uh, we had one of our presidents say, well, I mean, I don't think strategic planning is very good. But you know what? A lot of the, the clubs that are active and vibrant, they don't have that fluff ball kind of plan. Do you know what I mean? You know, when we have a strategic planning session, we go, we have this, we're doing a planning session, and people are throwing fluff balls up on the, up on the board. The easy stuff, the stuff that, yeah, we should be an inclusive club, or we should have more membership, or we should, and they're fluff balls. They're not really dealing with who we are and what we're doing. The best clubs have a strategic plan or a plan or a goal or an objective, and they make themselves accountable to it. They put the plan out there. They make their board members accountable to each of the areas. And each board meeting, they're talking about, hey, what were we doing, you know, Jordan, what were we doing about membership? You're, you're our membership chair? You said we're going to have two more members by this time. What are we doing? They hold each other accountable. It's not okay to say, well, I never got around to it, is it? if you do that. And then they present their, their results to their clubs every quarter, every six months. They're account, it's an accountable plan, accountable goals, right? If you don't know where you're going, how do you know when you get there, right? So whether you call it a strategic plan, a goal, objective, I don't care what you call it. If you don't define where you want to be, you'll never know if you're successful or not. The fourth thing, and this is, this is one of the things that I think is just absolutely so important. The clubs that I see that are really, really struggling are the clubs that don't have a purpose. They're not connected to the community. The clubs that are vibrant and engaged, I don't care what member I ask in that club, they'll tell me what they stand for. 
I'm going to use an example that, that has worked really well, and it's going to play into the fifth thing that's important as well. Banff, our Banff Club. You know, took over this role last year, and I was told, you know, the graves are already built. You can try the defibrillator one more time, <laughs> but I, I just don't think that they're going to survive. You know what? You go meet them, and there's three or four people around the table the first time I go there. Hey, tell me what you guys are about. Well, we meet every Thursday at lunch. And Well, why are you meeting? Well, we have a meeting that day. <laughs> okay. There was no purpose. There was no reason to be there. There was no, why would you invite a friend to a meeting when you had no purpose to the meeting? Well, lo and behold, and through our review and some community assessment, Banff happens to own the lease to the park right on Banff Avenue. We just thought they, they had their sign up there because they had donated to the park. No, 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 no. It's their park. <laughs> well, holy smokes, now you throw up the flag and you say, hey, we own the park. We want to do something different with it. You invite the community into it. You invite Banff Town into the thing. Do you think they have a purpose today? Now, we, I've been to a couple of meetings where they've had 20 people up, right? Actually, the goal for Hugh Pettigrew for next year, their, their president-elect, is 20 for 20, right? You're going to have 20, new, 20 members in 20. And they have a purpose. It's a, an amazing agenda, amazing thing. Now, I'm going to build to the next thing, is the fifth thing that's so, so important is collaboration. And collaboration starts within the club. How often have we all voted for something? Yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do this big fundraiser, and yeah, we're, we're great. And we got half the club going ahead trying to row, and we got the other half throwing the anchors out. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we need to be collaborative and respectful within our own club, number one. But number two, I see Rotary's role in the community as filling the gaps in our community that our governments definitely aren't, aren't fulfilling and nobody else is fulfilling. And so I'm going to use Banff as another example. So uh, our assistant governor, Martin Parnell, he has started along with uh, Michelle Dagenet. Michelle has really been a driver in this thing. And uh, Steve from uh, uh, Cochrane and Dave from Banff, the Bow Valley Group. They even got their own letterhead, Bow Valley Rotary Group. It's kind of neat. It looks, it looks great. But here's what happens. Every quarter, the president and president-elect from those groups get together, along with Martin and myself, and we talk about things. We talk about how we can do things together. Out of that has come people from the Canmore Club going and supporting and helping. Almost every meeting, there's one, two, three members from Canmore there. Martin's been there a number of times. I've been there at least half a dozen times. You do, and all of a sudden they say, holy smokes, people care. Holy smokes, look at these other ideas. Look at these energy that we have, have happening. So we filled in the, the cemetery hole. We put the defibrillator away because they've got a plan and a purpose and they've got, they're working collaboratively with people. Right? So that's what I'm seeing. So coming back to these groups, the clubs that we have struggling in our area, we know, we know who those clubs are, and a lot of them are regionally struggles, you know, the regional struggles with them, right? And what we need to do as Rotarians, not just our directors and our assistant governors and whoever we are, we need to be able to get out to those clubs and be willing, when they put their hand up, and I'm gonna tell you, this isn't a comedy session, now I'm gonna tell you something that's happened. I had one club and I asked them if they could coordinate and collaborate with another club. And here's the answer I got from their board. Well, why would we do that? They've never helped us. When we talk about changing our culture, changing the way we deal with things in Rotary, we need to change that mindset. And I'm asking every one of us here, when you see, you hear, or you're driving through a town that's got a Rotary, meet, a Rotary club, think about dropping in on them. That's all it takes. Or if you got some time, if it's not their Rotary day, Everybody on Club Runner, you can find out who the president is and make, give them a call. Say, hey, can we have coffee? I know it sounds simple. I know it sounds trite. 
but it means so much to these clubs that we, we do some things together. Okay? So that's what I'm seeing. And this, this year is, is being connected. The theme is being connected, right? That's what this is about. See, we're, we're rotary. Sometimes we get into our silos by club. And that, that hurts us, or has hurt us to, to date. Now what we want to do is say, how can we as Rotary in this community build? How in this, this Rotary world, okay, I don't have, this club doesn't have the money, that club's got the money, but boy, we got the people that we can, how do we find ways that we can collaborate? How can we find ways that we can work together? Okay? So that's a vibrant club. You got, I am so grateful that you guys are here and you're learning about this stuff. And that, I, mean, I look at the leaders in this room and I've met you at your clubs. And I'm so excited that you're the one stepping forward because there's going to be some energy. There's things happening and, and we're going to have, we're going to have continue to grow Rotary in our district. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being here. Right? So now the one thing I do want to do is sell our old conference. I want to tell you, we're just over 200 members now, or 200 people have registered already. And we're having one exciting kind of program. The Friday, the Friday, we're doing things a little bit different because we're going into a rural community. We're doing something we want, we want to go into the community and we want to welcome the community with us. Because see, that collaboration isn't always with other Rotary Clubs. That collaboration is with the Lions Club. That collaboration is with the town. That collaboration is with a government agency, right? We're going into Olds, and holy Moses, we've got the, the Friday afternoon, we've got our, our Mary's coordinating with our interactive groups, middle school and high school. We're gonna go into the community and do some service work. So come prepared, wearing your jeans, wearing your Rotary at Work shirt. We're gonna have some shirts there for you if you don't have one. And we're gonna go into the community and we're gonna do something. There's a list of things that Mary's been working on that are really exciting. Right? That evening, that evening, we're, uh, our opening ceremony is a rodeo. The, 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 the Olds, uh, the olds uh, College, they have a rodeo program. So they've got an eight-event rodeo going for us. Eight event. We've got a professional announcer. We've got the whole gig happening. And we're going to put on a rodeo. And one of the things you're going to be getting this week, all the clubs are going to be getting uh, a request. Can you sponsor... Can every club here sponsor $250 for an athlete at Olds College? See, what we want to do is raise money for their scholarships. It's not going to, for us to have a better party, right? We want to the money to go into the scholarship. The Saturday, uh, Saturday, we're really excited about how we're opening, and you know, we've got a, a real, we do have a bit of an indigenous theme, and how we're going to open and welcome everybody. And then we've got, uh, we've got themes. We don't, we're not having a bunch of talking heads this year. What we're having is active, engaged kind of programming. So the first one we've got, we've got a reconciliation indigenous program where we're going to have a, actually have a blanket exercise. We're going to run that two-hour session again in the afternoon So because we're going to have the different things. Then we're also going to have, we're going to have uh, one on, on mental health. And we've got the president of the Canadian Mental Health Association is, the, is our chair of, our, our, of, of that session. And within that, we've got practitioners, we've got people within mental health agencies and whatever that are going to be there. They're going to start with a little uh, a kind of an opening, but then we're breaking into seminars. And we're going to have, we're going to have a working session over in the corner for preteens, preteen mental health. We're going to have one that's for seniors. And we've got three others in the middle, right? Because what we want is to have an opportunity for people to talk and deal and, and look at different issues, an active, engaged kind of program. We're having one on, you know, one of the things I've heard while I've been going out uh, dealing with our clubs is, boy, we're struggling with fundraising. I, you know, I can't get any more people out to our gala. We're losing money. We're not making as much money. We're tired, you know, whatever. So we're actually having a, a two-hour session on creative fundraising techniques. And we're bringing in people from the Canadian Philanthropic Association to be driving and running that program. Kind of cool. Get outside of our own heads and let's see how other people are doing it. We're doing another one. We talked about it with the presidents. We're having the, uh, uh, a, a two-hour session on community projects. So what we want to have is like a Dragon's Den. We're going to have a, 
We're going to be inviting all the clubs. If you've got a project, a community project that you want to share, and maybe you need some help with, we want you to share. Then we're going to have a little speed dating afterwards so that people can say, hey, you know, we can help you with that, or we can help you with this idea, right? Or, or the, one of the biggest things that I think, biggest benefits you're going to get is, hey, that's a neat idea. It worked in Lethbridge. Why wouldn't it work in Red Deer? Right? We want to share the ideas. We're also having a session, a two-hour session on international projects. Because again, how many have international projects that they want to do on a global scale, and they want to do bigger, they want to do different things, and they're looking for partners? How do you find partners? Well, you're going to find them at the conference. Right? Again, we have the little speed dating thing. Uh, the other one we've got. Oh, falling through the cracks. There's uh, the story, uh, Greg Price uh, is a young man uh, that uh, uh, from the time he was diagnosed or things started to happen in his, in his body to the time he died was 441 days, I think it was. His family, uh, Dave Price and his family, have created a, a, about a half hour movie about, and it's called Greg's, uh, uh, Greg, Greg's Story Falling Through the Cracks. And what we're having is we're going to show that movie, which shows, it, it's an amazing, we did this in Calgary, we had an evening of dialogue, and we're going to have, show the movie, and then we're going to have somebody from Alberta Health, we're going to have Dave Price, the father, a, as a speaker, and we're going to have somebody from the College of Physicians as well. So we're going to have a panel that we're going to talk about what we learned from that, and what's happening in our health system. Okay? So that, we're really jazzed about that. Noon, we're having a guy named Craig Kielberger come in. We're going to pull everybody together. Craig Kielberger is the guy that started Free, uh, Free the Children program, and he's got the Meet a Weave program happening now. And we're, having, we're inviting all the Interact clubs, all the if you've got schools that already interact, but you've got kids that want to come to this thing, we're going to have our own mini We Day. So we got Craig Kielberger talking. We're going to bring our Rotarians together so you can see what it's really like to deal with a bunch of youth. And then you can stay if you want, or you can go to the other sessions. But then we got a number of other speakers, including uh, Laura Lai, who's our uh, Peace Fellow uh, uh, scholar right now who's in Thailand. She's going to be speaking to motivate the kids. We've got Michael Kaysan, who does a lot of motivational things with kids. We've got uh, somebody from Inclusion, Alberta, a young lady who's going to the University of Alberta in a wheelchair and talks through her wheelchair. Right? We've got, we've got a number, uh, Christina Hassan, who won that. Innovator Award, right? There to motivate the kids, right? So it's a whole program. We're charging 20 bucks a kid to come and that covers the cost of the lunch. We've actually been working on some busing options as well for that. That evening, we're breaking out and we're, we're not, I'm not, I think you can tell I'm not a gala kind of guy. So what we're doing is we're having a jacket and jeans party. We've got the Cow Palace going and the Cow Palace seats a thousand people. And we've got George Canyon coming to sing. And that, that is going to be an evening of celebration. Evening of celebration. We're going to be showing pictures of all the things that have been happening in our district this year. We're going to be celebrating our clubs. We're going to be celebrating our award winners there. Now, think about this. thousand person. Am I naive enough to think we're going to a thousand, up to 1,000 people at the call? Nah. I'm, I'm still dreaming that we're going to be over 300. And I think we're going to get there. But what we've done is we've invited the community to come in and support it, right? And here's the, here's the twitch with that, is the, the Olds Rotary Club have committed a half million dollars to the Ro uh, Rotary Park uh, in Olds, the Rotary Athletic Park. I don't know about your club, we got 80 some odd members, and if I had committed a half million dollars to something, We'd have half of our guys with the defibrillator for sure, <laughs> but they've done it. And and what we want to do is we want to take the money, so the money that we're going to raise from our concert, and it's going back to the Rotary uh, uh, Park. So uh, we want to thank you for that. Sunday we got we got uh, the typical that we got our AGM, the things that, that we have to do. Most of you be sleeping through, but then after that we're going to have our celebration of life, our celebration of our Rotarians. And rather than handing out dead roses to everybody, we're going, we're going into the park and we're going to plant some trees in their memory. So I think it's an exciting program. It's one that you can be active and engaged in, one that you're going to be able to share your passions, share your ideas, and uh, we'd really love to see you. So 
uh, let's get on the district website and get yourself registered like the other 200 people that have today. So thank you. Well, Mary, go ahead. Oh, spouses. Well, we, we feel that our program is a set up that we want our spouses to participate. We want them there with us. Now, the other thing is that we're still working out the details. We want you to bring your kids. If you've got kids, like our younger members, we're, gonna, we're trying to have a pro, uh, the afternoon with Kielberger would be perfect for your kids because we're going to have some early act kids all the way through. So we want that. We want everybody there and participating alongside us. We're not going to have shopping tours into the downtown Olds. I don't know if you've been there, but the, the hardware store is about where we're going to get to. But <laughs> I resemble that. <laughs> you, you resemble that, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, it's, so we really, because we, I believe, and you hear me talking when, when I'm in your clubs, I talk about not your Rotary Club. I, I talk about our Rotary family. And when I'm inducting people, that's exactly what we talk about. We're welcoming people into our Rotary family. And that's how we have to approach it. So we'd love the spouses to be there. Now, we've tried to make this incredibly affordable. So we're, it's $250 uh, per, per person. No, yeah, plus $150 for a partner. So we've made it very, very affordable. If you want to stay in the, in the dorm, which is I think is where Marlene and I are going to stay, it's $65 a night. If you want to stay in a hotel, the one that we've got booked for the conference there's only 10 rooms left in it, so if you want a hotel room, you better get, get going on that. We are going to have a, the, uh, 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 the RV park, and we're going to have uh, camping available as well. It's, it's on the site as well. And we still have the shelter box thing. We're working through the details, but basically we're looking for if somebody wants to sponsor a shelter box for $1,200, we'll have a shelter box tent there for you to sleep in. So we'll, we'll and we'll have some we'll have some shower facilities and stuff so you don't have to use the you know the solar bags to to have a shower. But anyway, we really want to have you there. We really want you there as part of our family and and celebrating a great year that we've had. Thank you.